DeLuna Coffee has been fueling Florida and beyond since 2014, and now Wake Up War Chant. DeLuna Coffee is owned and operated by the Lemmix family, Ed, Courtney, and their son, Brett. When not roasting the perfect coffee blends, these FSU diehards can be found tailgating near the Unconquered statue. Go and set your sights on their Lighthouse blend. Made of five different coffee origins, a combination of light and medium roasted beans creates this wonderful cup of premium coffee. Use the promo code WARCHANT15 for a 15% discount. Visit DeLunaCoffee.com and check out their Facebook and Instagram. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. WarChant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up WarChant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. Coffee's for closers only. Now here's WarChant.com's Aslan Hajavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What's up, everybody? It's Wake Up WarChant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. DeLunaCoffee.com. Come explore our world of coffee. That promo code, WarChant15. Use it. You can get a 15% discount on anything over on the website. Website, hey, somebody say something about a website. Warchant.com is a website. We work for that website, me and Corey. Promo code is Warchant30. 30 free days of access to the ultimate Seminole sports source. Warchant.com. We here, Corey. We back. Midtown offices live in, in, in the flesh, you and I. It feels good to see you again, mm. to be up in you. Well, I don't whoa, mean it like whoa, that. Let's, 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 let's we edit. can restart the show. Up in here, looking at you. It feels good. Yeah. feels good, man. You look really – you look regal on my recliner. It's a great recliner. You've done a real good job here. Uh, I don't know uh, – I've never – I haven't even sat in it yet. You, have you not? You're breaking it in. Oh, it's Thanks. really nice. It's really nice. I might li- – I mean, look, man, you, you hit it. How did you – you had to have sat in it. Well, how would you have gotten it without testing it out? Well, this is the funny thing. When I went down for the Norvell camp in Tampa, the youth camp, mm. I – because my this is my thing. I'm terrible. You give me too many options, I just get paralysis by analysis. I drove down there. I gave myself like two hours extra in Tampa before the camp started. I'm like, I'm going to drive to the Macy's in Tampa, and I'm going to try to find furniture before mm-hmm. I have to go to the Norvell camp thing. I only had like 30 minutes to figure it all out, and that, they had that on the showroom floor. I'm like, I like it. I'll take it. It's good, man. It's good. You, you picked yeah. the winner. I think it worked out good. That's the thing. Give me too much time. I start thinking about stuff, and then it's like, oh, I should I do this? Gut oh, instinct, this man. Better. Most yeah. shopping decisions yeah. should be gut instinct. Yeah. Just that feels right. It looks right. It's going to my home. Don't have to sit it. Don't have to sit it. Don't even care how much it costs. Yeah. Just ring it up. It's going to my home. Yeah. It just looks good. Like, I, I need to take a photo of you on it. Maybe that'll be like our new avatar. <laughs> <laughs> just you relax and live in the dream, man. It's a June show. Goodness gracious, what will we talk about, Corey? Not complaining about it, but just what we're figuring out a way because we're creative, you and I, and talking mm-hmm. about stuff. We got baseball in the background. Unfortunately, the Knoll's not playing in any sort of batter ball sport right now. It'd be nice. It would be nice to be being a super regional. You know, Corey, it'd be nice to talk about a team maybe going to Omaha, planning a road trip to go to Omaha. But it's tough. Maybe was that a reminder at all to us this season, maybe, as we watch the number one overall seed currently losing at home? It's hard to get to Omaha. This team makes it out there a lot, I think 24 times. Somebody told us, somebody said on YouTube, hey, guys, they've been out there 23 times. We should, should we know that? Should we know that offhand when we're talking about FSU baseball? How many times have they been to Omaha? I, so what was it? Uh, Martin has been out there 19 times. Is that what it was? Like, I thought it, there no. was a 19 for, for Mike Martin Sr. to be out there. Um, I don't know why 19 came to mind. Um, but, yeah, man, I guess it, what it, watching the Arkansas series makes me long for sort of. I'll, I'll, I'll qualify it in a second. But, like, the FSU Wichita State Super Regional from Buster's last year, that place was uh, just, you know, it, it harkens back to when Hauser used to feel like that. Mm. Now, it didn't have as much, as many people as, as this cathedral that they built in Fayetteville <laughs> for some, somehow, <laughs> some way, with that Tyson money, I guess, or the Walmart money, wherever they're getting it from. But um, it, it's, it's really, it's really, and then look at Mississippi State's. It's stadium. ridiculous. I mean, it's just it's it's so crazy who you're competing against. But I just remember those days, and maybe that was like my first. That was probably my first really big Florida State sporting event that I covered. Covered, and I wasn't just helping out. I was kind of Steve Ellis was the beat writer, but I was there in the flesh, really helping. Mm-hmm. I remember it was a hundred and probably forty eight degrees. I mean, it was an incredible. That's one thing I don't miss is these things are so hot in uh, Tallahassee. I mean, uh, you stepped outside on Sunday, oh, didn't yeah. you? It's ridiculous. You're playing baseball in this. Buster caught 27 innings in that. It's, uh, but, yeah, it's, uh, you know, super, 
I, I'll be honest with you, man. I like the Super Regionals more than the College World Series from a viewer, from an yes. audience viewership standpoint. Yes, I agree. There's more of a crowd. It's not a, not that – I mean, they're great fans in Omaha, but yeah. it's a sterile environment because they're not a fan of any particular team, and all the games are 2-1 to because nobody can hit a home run out there. So, yeah, uh, yeah I, I like the Super Regionals. It's a fun weekend. I don't like that – I'm pretty sure Vanderbilt had already clinched a spot in Omaha before – Three of the series had even played game one, yeah. like even first pitch. Yeah, both their games were at noon. Yeah, so they so were done quick work. on Saturday by 3 o'clock, and there were still four series, I think, three or four series that hadn't even had their first pitch of the series yet. Yeah, Mississippi State uh, hadn't had – Mississippi State and Notre Dame hadn't gone yet. Uh, Texas USF hadn't started their series yet. Um, Tennessee that's, LSU hadn't started yeah, their series yet. That's just dumb. <laughs> I mean, it's just dumb. But, it, you know, that's a small critique. There's a lot of big, there's a lot bigger critiques for the NCAA. That's just a, that's just dumb. One of life's big lament, uh, I lament it much, uh, is that I, I didn't really get lamentations. Called. Is that a word? Yeah, lamentations of the women. It's either the room before you. <laughs> okay, yeah. so it is. What's best in life, Conan? <laughs> um, is that I didn't get into college baseball until Rosenblatt got retired. I, I think you know that would have. I mean, I'd be one of those guys. I probably would con- every single year on the show. I'd probably be just complaining about TD Ameritrade and how it's. It's not the real thing. Bring back Rosenblatt. And you talk about sterile environment and, and, and atmosphere right. like Rosenblatt had it in spades, it seems like. So we'll be back, hopefully. We'll be back, hopefully, with uh, Is baseball. that the end of the show? I mean, I Oh, no. I, I thought you meant we'll be back, like, tomorrow with yeah. another show. Yeah. Uh, we should – I think we'll have Michael Lengson on later on the program. Talk hey, about it was rec- a big recruiting weekend, right? Didn't they have four or five more kids this yeah. weekend? Official. They had a couple official guys. Uh, Daughtry Richardson, I know, an offensive lineman originally from Tallahassee, down to Miami now. Mm-hmm. I think said it was his still has uh, family members up here. Like I think yeah. sisters still live up in okay. Tallahassee. Yeah, so uh, we got that to talk about. I don't know. I should stories on Warchant dot uh, com if you want to if you want to uh, go read it or subscribe and then go read it. By the way, seventeen trips to the College World Series for Mike Martin. Uh, I don't know how many the the whole pro. I, I, I want to say twenty four. They had seven trips before. Eleven. I mean, that's what says all right. The let's official let's go. There, man. Why would I say nineteen? That, okay, so seventeen is a lot. That's a that's a big number. Uh, so he started what eighty? Yeah. 75, 70, 65, 63, 62, 57. So okay. six trips all prior. Right. So okay. yeah, twenty three. That guy was right. Sorry about that. We'll bring you on as our, our stat guy. I should have pulled this tweet up though about recruiting. Uh, so as you all know, Kane Madden, we wanted him. I mean, there was a concerted, focused social media campaign. Mm. Coaches, players, yes. uh, Denzians. Uh, Denzians, is that right? Is that the word? Right? Denizens. Denizens. Yeah. Terrible. It's a bad day. I had two strikes. I'm going to stop talking at this point. They were trying to get this kid from Marshall, All-American offensive lineman, to come to Florida State. He visits first visit June 1st. Everything opens up. He's in Tallahassee for the visit, but ends up going to Notre Dame. And then Brian Kelly makes a uh, – he didn't, he didn't tweet it. Somebody tweeted it out. But about how, here we go. On Notre Dame's successful approach to recruiting grad transfers, it's not about fancy car shows. It's not about brick and mortar or about the glitz. It's about a sound business decision because they've already been through that and that has kind of worn off. It's about making a smart business decision as it relates to the right now for them and how it can elevate them to the next step. So you're thinking he's taking a shot at Florida State by the car? Car show, yeah. You think that turned Kane Madden off? Like he would have come if they hadn't had the car out front? Well, like, that, guys, oh, I'm no, just no, here no, on no, a no. business trip. Not blaming it, but I, just uh, why would Brian Kelly say that? Like, you won. You won the battle. Why say that? Yeah, I, I don't know. And also, if you're an offensive lineman at Marshall, sorry to all the Marshall fans out there, you haven't gone through this before. It's not like he was a much-heralded recruit coming out of high school. Mm. They had all these big-time schools. Uh, I think he walked on. I rolling out the around. red carpet. So, you know, he, he hadn't been through this before, yeah. like most kids that are at Florida State or Notre Dame. So, yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thinly veiled – I don't even know if it's veiled. It's just a shot at Florida State. But, look, man, it's, it's, it's easy to say that when you're the head coach at Notre Dame and you've, you've done pretty well. How about going and winning something that matters, Brian Kelly? Ooh. Do you have any championships? Ooh. What's the last championship Notre Dame won? Ooh. 88. Con- conference championship? They don't do that. Zero. Zero. Oh, you won your NBC championship. That's awesome. You haven't won any – you haven't hoisted a trophy that mattered in 33 years. So, 
Congrat- Did I do the math right? Yeah, 33 years. So congratulations. You got the Marshall Lyman. And you can't – there's no um, – you know, sometimes when you lose a recruit, Florida State fans or coaches will might say, "Ah, we wanted this guy anyway." Jimbo would do that every now and again when when he'd lose. Uh, who did he? Who was the linebacker that went to Clemson that ever that got really upset when he was committing to Clemson? Tony Stewart. There you go. And then he, had, I think, he always got hurt. He didn't have yeah. a career there. Yeah. But um, you know, Jimbo. I remember Jimbo telling me he's like, uh, Aaron, "I think Erickson Jenkins is better than him anyway." <laughs> which he might have been, which he might have been. Who knows? But we yeah. never saw really from either either side. But coaches will do that sometimes. They'll claim, ah, we were, we we wanted them, but you know, the Kane Madden Natale thing. Clearly, yes, Florida State coaches wanted him badly. Yeah. I don't think he chose Notre Dame because of a car, right. like he was put off by the car. I, I think he might have seen the game last year that they played. He might have seen the record. He might have, you know, it's his last year. He wants a chance at the playoff, perhaps. Yeah. Maybe, you know. You can't fault him for that. I wouldn't fault uh, anyone right now, if you're an offensive lineman, for choosing Notre Dame over Florida State. You got to go live in South Bend. I say football player, really. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the Florida State offense is more fun to play with, playing than Notre Dame's. Like, I mean, Brady was, you know, if Brady left the college right now and had one time transfer and it was between Florida State and Notre Dame. I mean, well, I know. you know, there's, there's Shannon there's, gonna be like, hey, well, you know, I mean, there's pros and cons to yeah. both. I mean, it's Indiana. It is. You got to live bleak. in Indiana, and it's, it's bleak after. Yeah. I don't no know, offense to our fans 20th. in Hoosier State, but it's it's not Florida. Not a lot of well, you know, in South Bend isn't a pretty. It's a it's a great. I love the campus, but the yeah. city, the surrounding right. areas, is not. Mm-mm. It's like those scenes in Hoosiers when they're taking the road trips. It's just barren trees and drizzle, you know, snow drizzles. Um, it's not a great. It's just. But look, man, he's there. A business decision is right, right? He's like, from the Midwest, too, so probably Notre Dame has a little bit more allure. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, growing sure. up. You know, probably, oh, my dad always watched Notre Dame football. Well, look, and they got Dylan Gibbons. So they we'll, we'll see who won mm-hmm. that. So I guess Dylan Gibbons is a big fan of the car. Is that what Brian <laughs> Kelly was saying? Like, Dylan Gibbons didn't make a business decision? <laughs> oh, man. Well, I think a couple of people have also – uh, said that, I mean, and I'm looking at it, there's actually a tweet of him in the car. People are like, well, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't for him. It was for the high school players. It's like, well, hey, man, we, we took the L on this. It's fine. We're not going to you're not gonna win every recruiting battle. Nick Saban's lost a couple of them. You know, yeah. I mean, I know. Quarterback from would, Hueytown left. So. I mean, what, what kind of kid would be like, man, I loved everything about the place. Everything about it. I love the campus. I love the stadium. <laughs> The academic that presentation. Car. Yeah, the it car. was just the car. I, I can't get over the car, so I'm coming to live in Indiana for the next six months. I, what I do wonder, though, is wh- how people talk about – like, I, I want to hack into someone's – I want to hack into Brian Kelly's group text message with he – I don't know. Who would be in a group text message with Brian Kelly is also another coach. I, just I wonder, don't feel like Brian Kelly yeah, has a bunch a of friends. I don't think he does either. Like, I wonder what the Kirby, Jimbo, Saban, Muschamp – text messages about i mean do you think like just you say that i i would be uh, i would be completely stunned if they had a group text those four but if they did do you think they would send like just gifts to each other like (laughs) funny gifts like oh great call kirby (laughs) and it's a gif of one of the one of the famous gifts i mean i i just it's it's bizarre to even wrap your mind around like people like that being on a group text yeah but just i wonder what people talk how people talk about norvell like within the coaching fraternity, just because of like that call. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not bothered by this stuff. So before everyone starts like defending him as if I'm attacking him, I'm not attacking him. I just wonder what the perception is with like this, the satellite, you know, the, the, the mega camp, him doing these youth camps all across the state. I just wonder if it's one of these things where, like, hey man, we've, we've done, there's business has been done this certain way forever. And this is how we do business. And like, you're not doing it this way. So like, do they resent him for it? Do they clown him for it, uh, or do they just, like, roll their eyes at it? Um, well, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll see soon enough with however this recruiting class does turn out. Because the one thing I will say is that – and, I, and you know, listen, when we – I don't know how I, – I can't diplomatically say it, so I shouldn't say it. What these kids are saying about their trip and, and how much they enjoy Florida State, I do think is different than what they – how they talked about this campus – maybe towards the end of Jimbo's tenure and mm. the way they talked about the will. There does seem to be the, the presentation, not the way they've been, been treated, but I think the plan laid before them, the way they're kind of um, shown the ropes and, 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 and given the plan 
and the presentation for this school, I think is being is being done in a more crisp fashion because the way they talk about it, the quotes they're giving to us and the other recruiting websites. Uh, again, it's June. They have to go out and win some football games to hold on to these guys. But I really do think these aren't token trips, man. These aren't. Hey, I'm you know I'm I'm from I don't know Tennessee. I'm going to go visit Florida. Also, I'll visit you guys on the way back up to Athens or something like that. But these these kids do want to be here for whatever reason, and they're they're enjoying the plan being put in place. So I think that so no matter what the coaches are saying, um, as long as the players are buying into it and, and they're going to commit to him, that's what's important. So we'll keep hope for that. Yeah, it, it seems like it's a lot though. Like I don't know how many offers they they have out there, but it seems like they do. Um... They're kind of flooding the market in June with these official visits and these and just these visits in general, um, which is probably the smartest thing to do. Like when you're looking for a lot of bodies, bring as many as you can to campus. Um, and I do think they, I, I, you know, we'll see how it ends up stacking up, class after class after class. But I, you know, I, I you certainly get the idea that uh, the the players and their high school coaches, their mentors, their family members all seem to buy what Norvell is saying. Now, will they all choose him? No. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think there's there's something to be said just for getting a couple five stars to visit right now. Not all of them. Florida State hasn't fallen that far. Yeah. But just getting a few to visit Absolutely. can do wonders for you. For the other guy, even if they end up choosing Alabama, it, you know, they, they, do a, they have a novel idea to go play for Nick Saban <laughs> and maybe help him win his 15th national title or whatever he's at now. But even if you get the kid to visit, I think that shows that you're competing with the big boys. Like it felt like, especially the last recruiting class, the last two recruiting classes, the first one of Norvell, the last one of Taggart, nobody of consequence even visited Florida State. And I shouldn't say consequence. That's way too strong. Oh, officially, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Taggart got all those guys on campus in the spring of 2019. Well, and he got the Thibodeau, the Thibodeau yeah, defensive end. Yeah, 2018, um, I'm sorry. He got them all. In, yeah, they were here. The Thibodeau. Yeah, I think he was here for the Virginia Tech game. The Kobe Dean. I mean, he had George Pickens. Like, the number one sure. player in Alabama was George Pickens. The number one player in Mississippi was Nicobe Dean. Uh, the number one player in I mean, California was Kayvon Thibodeau. Like, he had those guys but on see, campus. Don't you, I think it's the inverse, right? Like, so Taggart had all the big kids come to campus the first year. Before he had a chance to right. show, yes, and then that second class was just a bunch of there. I don't know how many five stars visited, but no, not many, no. and none seemed to be serious. It seems like the inverse with Norvell. Like obviously his first class, his first real class, you're not getting a lot of great looks. Number yeah. one, you're in COVID, you're coming off horrible seasons, and it was just kind of trying to glom together anything. And now it seems like okay, now the bigger names are coming. The momentum is, I guess, is trending up, trending in the right direction. It's not Thibodeau and then, oh, what is this? It's, what? oh, man, this isn't a great class. Okay, these guys are – like, it's going in the right direction now, I think. I think he's got some, uh, you, know, you know, momentum, but momentum only goes so far as a signature on a piece of paper, and that, that needs to happen in whatever – were we six months away from that, five yeah. months away from that? I mean, it, does, it almost defies logic in a way because, to your point, like, yeah, they – Willie no, was, think, but Willie was the, selling hope and optimism, but then he showed, and then and then he showed you kind of what was going to happen, and then obviously people started backing away and falling off. Like Norvell, you saw, you saw not that that's what Mike Norvell's team is going to be, but you saw a three and six football team, right? But that somehow hasn't scared people away. Yeah, I think. Well, number one, you do get a break because of you, you don't know, get a scared, break. But scared away our guy uh, Altmaier, obviously him going to Ole Miss. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, like these these players now, and the thing too, you talk about them saturating offers and visits. I mean, a lot of that is these players, and, and the way that the calendar is now, with the amount of signings they can do, with the way the portal is. Like these high school kids want to hurry up and get their spot in line, right? And and you know, get their quote committable offer and agree to it now. So that's why, and, th and they're all coming here now. Like they're, some of these kids' first trips or to Florida State. It's 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 wild. Well, I, th I think it's some of that's a power of personality, too. I do think Florida State still resonates yeah. with 17-year-old kids. But, you know, let's be honest. That championship, they were nine years old, right? Is that right? They were nine or ten years old. I don't know how big of football fans they were, but I don't know how much Jameis Winston yeah, 10, still resonates 10, with these kids. I, I think Jalen Ramsey and Derwin James might still resonate with DBs. Yeah. But even then, I don't know that they remember a lot of Jalen Ramsey's freshman year at Florida State. Right. Um, but but I, I just think it's the power of his personality, the power of the coaching staff's personality. Um, and just, look, it has been a world I, – oh, I, I don't even say whirlwind. It has been a barrage of recruiting events. Mm. We are only in the middle of June. 
we are only at Flag Day, the great holiday Flag Day, yes. um, which might be my birthday. I don't remember. But we, we might be uh, at flat. We're only in the middle of June, June 14th. And it seems like every day there's 25 other kids on this campus or 100 other kids on this campus. It never stops. And I think that, I think that grabs attention, too. Like Florida State just keeps going and going and going. This dude doesn't stop. Yeah, there's a clip of, of a kid working out, and I'm like, at a camp at Florida State, I'm like, well, they had the big man camp, you know, last week. Surely there's not another camp. Maybe that's what they're calling these things now when these players come to visit, because a lot of these players when they're coming to visit are actually being put through workouts to right. sort of confirm their worthiness. But no, man, like they had like a full out camp again this weekend while yeah. they're hosting a bunch of yeah. official visitors. It's um, it's unlike it's like it's it's it, it, I, I don't. Maybe this is going on at other places. I've like just, Jimbo I, Fisher would do the Jimbo Fisher camp. I wasn't around here for that. But sure, like, but that was like a couple. That was like, I think it was like two yeah. two day events. Yeah. But it didn't coincide with all this other stuff. Right. Like this seems to be just a. Uh, uh, it, it, did you ever see Mad Max? The last Mad Max <laughs> with Thomas seen. Hardy. Isn't that his name? And Charlize Theron. Tom Hardy. Tom it. Hardy. Yeah. That was just a barrage on the senses for two hours. It's good. I liked it. Yeah. yeah. But there, it's just you. There's no breath. You can't take a breath. It's just nonstop heavy metal, explosions, chase the whole time. That's what this seems like. Like it just. <laughs> I'm on War Chant, and it's like another one. There's yeah. there's more kids here. <laughs> what? There's four more stories that Langston's written. I mean, it just does not stop. Jimbo wasn't. Now Jimbo was a great recruiter and a great evaluator of talent, but it wasn't like this. Mm-hmm. And again. I don't know if this is what we expect in June of 2022 and 2023 and on and on, or if this is just COVID's done, it's it's Mad Max time. But yeah. it feels like it's Mad Max time. The clutch shot. The biggest hit. It's time for the Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. The best time of the day. Best time of the week. Mm. Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. Corral start. Elizabeth Mason. Okay. I'm gonna go. Softball deserves it. Uh, I almost wanted to go with uh, with Danielle Watson, who pitched the the first game, but things did not always work out the way we wanted. Elizabeth Mason dropping a bomb on Madison Fouts, which I think actually was technically the week before. Montana, you mean? Montana. What did I say your name was? Madison. Madison. It's fine. Sorry. You, you picked the city instead of the state. <laughs> But then also, uh, you know, and what would have been the the series clinching championship clinching game? She hits that two run home run. Mm-hmm. Uh, she brought the big stick out. You know, we fought fire with fire for a little bit against Oklahoma, but it didn't work out. But Elizabeth Mason, I mean, shoot, man, she's not Jesse Warren, but she's up there in terms of what she's been able to accomplish, especially in the postseason. So she's my pick. Yeah, and a lot of great moments for her in the postseason. A lot of them. Um, Again, going back to her freshman year with the huge home run uh, she hit out there, a couple of big home runs she hit out there. She hit one in the championship game, too, the one that clinched it uh, when so. they were down. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to go a great choice. Uh, I'm veering away from softball because I feel like I've been doing that for a month. Um, and Zaxby's deserves a little more, uh, you know. You they're know. more than just a chicken sandwich. Yeah, they're there's really a lot of other stuff. Yeah, 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 there's some variation there. So I'm going to, to track, uh, men's track. The Florida State men finished 10th. At the NCAA's, um, they didn't. They didn't have all their all their healthy bodies uh, available, or they would have finished higher. Uh, not that they would have beaten LSU. LSU stormed to it. But anyway, Jovan Martin, senior sprinter, surprise, surprise. Florida State has some good sprinters. Finished on the third, the four by one hundred team. He was part of that. That finished third in the country. Finished fourth in the hundred. Finished seventh in the two hundred. If you don't know how to score track, if you finish in first place, you get ten points for your team. Second place, you get eight. Third place, you get six. So he finished. He got six points for the one hundred for the four by one. He got five points for the finish in the hundred meter by himself, and then he got another two points for the two hundred finish. So total, he had thirteen points by himself of the twenty three they had as a team. So again, not quite Walter Dix esque, but a really good showing for him. And uh, yeah, hopefully, it seems like Brayman has this thing going back on track where uh, they'll be contending hopefully very soon for national championships again. But Jovan Martin from Houston, Texas. There we go. Let us know your pick for the Zaxby's Indescribably Good Player of the Week. Tweet at us at Wake Up War Chant. Corey, I don't have much left to say. Mm. Uh, I think, again, I'm going to try to get Langston on the show. I still don't know. Langston's busy. I don't want to bother him. Uh, I almost feel like reading this one thread. It was great. Some guy asked whether or not he was uh, paranoid or not because apparently, you know, 
everything on ESPN is is anti FSU, and it was great because most of the people walked in, they were like, "Come on, man, chill out, it's not." And I'm like, "Thank gosh." Um, but then it was on the it was on the last commercial break of this baseball game that you and I are watching. But it, it, it's the whole NCAA. You know, ninety eight percent of our student athletes go pro in something else other mm. than sports, and it actually showcased like three or four student athletes and had them you know, putting a stethoscope on and putting on a coat, showing you, like, what they're doing, juxtaposed it with their, you know, their exploits on the playing field. Right. Never heard of any. They're like, Michaela Bridges. Right. I'm like, I, I mean, maybe maybe Myron Roll. Hmm. Maybe do Myron Roll. Maybe I think, throw Myron Roll in there. I think the point of it is that you're not supposed to have heard of them. Like, so many of these athletes are just kind of – Anonymous, I won't say average. Anonymous, They're not. They yeah. had nondescript or not. They weren't. In, they weren't all Americans in their sport. They weren't household names, but they went on to achieve things because they got a scholarship to a school okay. and that kind of thing. Now Myron Roll certainly fits, but Myron Roll is a a bigger name than those names. I think maybe I'm wrong. I, I seem. I, you know, he's been on the Today Show. Yeah. He's been on Good Morning America, man. Okay. You know, they always call him an NFL star or a college football star. It's yeah. like, well, let's. Let's not use that term <laughs> so loosely. He was a star tur. <laughs> he wasn't a football star, but he's doing obviously he's he's twice as smart as I'll ever be, um, and is doing great things in the medical field. But he, you know, he that that was that was always a little bit overblown about like he chose medicine over the NFL. Well, the NFL chose right. for him, and he then went he went then went and pursued medicine. But he was a Rhodes Scholar, and he chose that first. But anyway, yeah, I, I see I see what you're saying. I, I got you. Uh, but, yeah, I would say this. Like, uh, I didn't listen to the softball uh, announcers, but it, I heard it from so many people and read so many tweets that it sounds like they, they but weren't. You, but you follow. You're in, this, you're in the cocoon, man. You're in the echo chamber that is Florida State Twitter. Not, yeah. not F- hashtag FSU Twitter, but FSU space Twitter. I think there's, there's two different things. Sure, sure. So, but it, I it, didn't get the sense of it, but I get to your point though. This, I agree with you. Like, I feel like if everybody else is saying that, then probably there's something wrong with me. But then again, I think about the fact that these are all passionate, live and die. Everything FSU does is amazing, and, and you know. Well, so I think you, the I, I think what people some people had an issue with was, and it, it turned out to be true, right? But like, Florida State's got an eight nothing lead in like the fourth inning against Alabama, mm-hmm. and all Beth Mowens keeps talking about is the momentum Alabama has. Stay with us. Yeah. Alabama scored two. They cut it to two. Alabama's got all the momentum. It's like, well, it's an eight-two in a softball game. There's that's like being down four touchdowns in a football game. Now they got it to eight-five, and the same thing happened with the Oklahoma uh, game where Florida State raced out to a big lead, and then it's like the announcers are trying to keep people interested, right. so they keep uh, they keep saying, "Oh, it's it's going to get close. It's closer. And, it's closer than it seems." And Oklahoma has some momentum, uh, so so maybe that had something to do with it. Florida State jumping out to a big lead, and of course, announcers want. They don't want a fourteen to two game. They want close games, so they're always they start cheering for the team that's behind. I think to make it closer, to make it more compelling. So maybe that had something to do with it. But um, like I said, I didn't I didn't listen I didn't listen to much of it. So I'll, I'll agree with you on that one. The, during the Alabama game, like Alabama come back to make it like eight four, and they're like, oh, the moment. It's like it's eight to four, man. Yeah. Like they're not coming back. Like good luck. Yeah. Um, that was the only time where I was like, well, come on, like you got, we don't have to, we don't have to totally I also think you it. get caught up in it. With, I mean, if you're an announcer there, I assume they were there, right? Uh, they were actually there. They yeah. were. Yeah. So when you're there in that environment and it's 11,000 Oklahoma fans and somebody hits a home run in the place did, goes nuts. When they were hitting home runs, Oklahoma, she was like, hey, that's a home run for Oklahoma. She, oh, she wasn't. She was right. pretty consistent. All I right. felt, man. And right. listen, and I'm not Beth, I'm not the Beth Moen's pre- fan club president over here, but. So is Dave Van Horn going to get grief for this, Aslan? So as we don't watch this jinx game, it. don't jinx it, um, man. Ke- no, Kevin Copps, who's the SEC Pitcher of the Year, twenty-four year old, uh, apparently discovered some gyro ball um, in, in between uh, during the COVID season has become unhittable. He's their reliever, their middle reliever, but a guy they use. I don't know, probably five innings a series typically. Something he's played like a thirty. I think this might be his thirty-third appearance of the season. Sure, and he's well. He's got he gets is, he's got twelve wins and eleven saves. Think yeah. about that for a second. Twelve wins and he leads the SEC in both categories, which is insanity. Well, he's starting for his first. They, they get to a game three, the number one team in the nation, and they ride his arm. Now he's thrown seven innings, only given up two runs, but over a hundred pitches. And it's like, okay, even if they win this, is he going to pitch him just every inning in Omaha? Just like, hey man, I'm going to ride with this kid. Like th- he must have thrown 160 pitches in the last. Because I'm, he's pitched in this series, 
Is this so, what happens when you become a father and you have a son who plays baseball? You get worried about pitch in count. Fact, I don't. I throw until their arm falls off. Yeah, I don't yeah, care. Well, but this, that guy at Ole Miss Nikhazy, they keep. Oh, I don't know what you do with Nikhazy right now. Like they were smoking Arizona. It's like, yeah, man, he's done until you get to Omaha. They're not going to throw him for another like ten days. Yeah. Let him keep going, eat up as many innings as you can because you have to come back and win a game three. Yeah, man, these kids are they'll be okay. Chill out, everybody. No I wonder Ryan threw two hundred fifty pitches in. A yeah, game. but if you if you did, I don't think you would. I wonder what Kevin Cobb's dad, because he this is a guy that redshirted as a he redshirted at Arkansas. If you're really good as a pitcher in college, you're not redshirted. He redshirted, then he had Tommy John, then he was just eh. He was like a middle reliever that wasn't any good. Then COVID happened, and now he's become the best pitcher in the sport. And it's like his dad probably two years ago was like, ah, eh, just enjoy life, man. Enjoy being on the Arkansas baseball team. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Now he's got a real professional career. I don't. You don't know how many bullets he has left. He's already had Tommy John once. Maybe, maybe don't throw him the whole game when he's only thrown like three innings. But it doesn't matter. You're right. You're you're right. It's fine. He's 24. He's probably about to retire from the sport anyway. My thing too, though, is if he's still if he's still effective, though, like why pull him? I mean, I don't. Know, I don't is there not a correlation between trauma on your arm and you start losing velo and you start getting hit and roughed up? Like who's going out there and throwing pitch 127 and striking people out, but but laboring, like, oh, my gosh, like oh, like having to yeah. take three breaths before they deliver their next pitch. I just feel like if, you know, there's – Yeah, I do think there's – there's it's not different schools of thought, but there is – some people will say, Hey, yes. I'm the guy that wanted to put Drew Parrish back out there after oh, a two-hour Oh, well, that's true. Well, and that, that, that was just Let dumb, not sad. because it's, it's hard to regain that, uh, yeah. as Drew Parrish proved, <laughs> and wasn't the same pitcher the next year. Like, that just broke him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but it's, you, you know, that, I think that's different, but I do think there are schools of thought about like, okay. Yeah. Is that because Nolan Ryan would pitch 300 innings a year. The national shut down Strasburg when he got to like 80 that one year and probably cost him world series. Strasburg still gets hurt. Nolan Ryan never got hurt. No. So I, there, there's no, I know there's some science to it, but it, you know, it depends on what you what side you're on. It, to make your call like there's 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 data for either way I don't have I'm not a real big fan of you're the number one team in the country you've been crushing people all year and then in the biggest game of the year you say I'm just gonna ride with this one dude until it's done your team should be good enough that you don't need to throw your ace well but they're not though obviously core they need him to hang in this game well right but it's like that's it you know uh, yeah just you're going to th- so you're going to throw him 140 pitches and then what in Omaha when you get down again does he pitch in every elimination game like the precedent has now been set where that's the guy you're going to the no, they the other f- 12 pitchers on your team that were all good eh well we might use you if we get if we get down by nine runs i mean i can understand in terms of like mental preparedness and and showing confidence in the other guys in the bullpen but at the same time, I don't know, man. Dogs recognize—I don't know. Real recognize real. Like game recognize game. Guys in the bullpen are like, I don't want to be out there right <laughs> yeah, yeah. now. Are you kidding? Like, keep Kevin throwing. just retired the side. Yeah, like he's I'm only good. A, he's only at 111, coach. Yeah, we're the number one overall seed, and we might lose. Like I don't want to be the guy that goes out there and takes the L. Like keep throwing. Well, and what's funny there. now is because he's pitched the first seven innings of this game. He hadn't started all year. He starts and he pitches the first seven innings. There's nobody that pitches the eighth and ninth for Arkansas right, but that's him. True. That's so who we'll see. I mean, he's got to finish it now because they don't have anybody that's ever been in a situation like that. Uh, yeah, but man, I do. I I really do love college baseball. I, I I I. Well, act like it then. You keep following this whole thing about like college softball is so superior and college baseball to figure it out. I think college baseball is just fine, man. I, I, but they, they, I, they don't I think get the push. I, There's a push behind softball because it is helping uplift women, and, and there's not a lot of – I mean, I well, think when look, it comes to women's basketball versus men's basketball, like men's basketball is always going to reign yeah. supreme. But there's like a little bit of wiggle room there where some people, in terms of the way that the pace of play, like you can you can mix – softball can be a more marketable, yeah. palatable watch than baseball. But, man, there's – I, mean, I think I like this version of college baseball. Now, Florida State tainted my view this year because it was so unwatchable. They were so unwatchable for most of the year in just strikeout, strikeout, error, strikeout. Um, but I think what, what college baseball has going against it, that college softball has going for it, by the way, they get good numbers. It was like 1.8 million. We're watching this great numbers, man. The, the, wor- the worst games played for the entire season are in Omaha. You know what I mean? Like, what are we, uh, so what are we doing court? Are we rooting for Notre Dame? 
as ACC brethren. So now, they're, yeah, well, again, we're, wa- we're, we're broadcasting this live as we watch Notre Dame take an eight-one lead on Mississippi State. No, and they but, were up there. They, they yeah, jumped out the they eight runs lead, on the, yeah. in the first game. Um, too, I, so. well, that that will be interesting if if Link w- wins oh. uh, on Monday and gets to Notre Dame, gets to the World Series in his second year at Notre Dame. Yeah, there, there's some there, – there will be – that will cause some conversation for sure. But anyway, what I was getting back to real quick is college softball's championship event is so much superior. Uh-oh. Well, that's there fine. There we go. Boo. But, but college softball's championship event is so much superior to baseball's. Because the, the, I'm telling you, the games in, in that stadium in TD Ameritrade oh, are just boring. straight snooze fest, yeah. man. Yeah. Every, there's like nine homers hit – through the entire tournament, or 11. And until they fix that, it's going to be I, – I, I'd much prefer the College World Series in Oklahoma City than the, to the one in Omaha from an audience standpoint. Now, right. Florida State was in it, so that, that helped yeah. me watch it. But it's just – it's more watchable, I think. So I, I hope they can fix the college – college baseball's crown jewel, to me, shouldn't be the Super Regionals, which to me right now it is. These yeah. are these – are, This is a great three days Eminently watchable yeah. and highly entertaining games – the ones in Omaha, it's like, okay, we go to the bottom of the seventh. There's been three balls into the outfield. <laughs> it's one to zero on a, an, uh, Arkansas scored an unearned run in the third inning. Like that, that's what it is right now, and I hope they can figure that out. I mean, I was out there, and the first time I was out there was 13, and Hunter Renfro went yard, and I think that was only the second home run hit. So it was. That was the third season of it being in TD Ameritrade. That's the Mississippi State kid, right? Yeah. And didn't he also – didn't they lose a game where he hit a ball to the fence? Yes. And it was caught – on any other stadium – was total no doubter off his – oh, it's gone! Yeah, nope. and, but any yeah. other stadium in the country, yeah. they Absolutely. win that game. Yes. And in the on the biggest stage, your stage is so big – the, it was caught. That's not the sport. Well, it's the wind too. It's the wind in that place. It's awful. Wind, you know. It's not. It's not uh, indicative of the sport. Right. Like it's not. And I know it's. You know, the Final Four. They play in these football stadiums, and it can be hard sight lines. But it's still basketball yeah. as we know it. Yeah. It doesn't change the sport. The, what they do in Omaha, cha- in my opinion, changes the sport. Where instead of a game where you can win eight to five, or you're in the game when it's four to one, if you have a four one lead in Omaha in the seventh inning, it's lights, lights out, man. The other team should just put in a position player to pitch because they have no chance. So that that's my biggest problem with Omaha. And uh, yeah, a little uh, little Clark family news is um, Brady actually had to miss the last day of his Sunday baseball tournament. He pitched for the first time this year on Saturday. Go on. He threw. Uh, he was in a perfect game tournament, which I I didn't realize. Let's this, go PG no, tournament. They they have radar guns on the and he's clocking at sixty three. He's bringing the twelve year old bringing that sixty three heat forty eight change up. So that's a nice discrepancy. That's a big discrepancy. That's huge. Yeah, that's a big discrepancy. He doesn't throw it like you're supposed to. He kind of just slows his arm down and lobs an EFAS pitch, but it had him off balance. Um, so anyway, he, that was the first time he'd pitched all year because they just, you know, he doesn't throw a lot of strikes, but he did all right. He did all right. But he missed Sunday um, because he came down to Tallahassee for the Leonard Hamilton basketball camp. But wait, what does 63 equate to? I mean, is that like 89? I I haven't looked it up. I think it's 60, It's 48 feet. I think they're at 48 feet, and he's throwing 63 from 48. So apparently on Sunday, the game he missed, they were facing a kid that threw in the low to mid-70s. So I mean that's I don't know what that is 106 like is that facing Chapman? Yeah, they didn't hit well. I know that. I don't think <laughs> I don't think Brady was upset that he missed that. Um, but yeah, so I'm actually going to pick him up as soon as we're done with this. Uh, pick him up from the camp. I get to see who his counselor is. We didn't know that at the time. Uh, John Thrasher saw me walk in with him and, and said hello President to me. John Thrasher. President John Thrasher uh, said hello to me, and that was very nice. And I made Brady introduce himself. And I'm like, this man's the president of the university. Yeah. He's like, the whole university? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's hard to explain. But, yes, he is. So, But that was very nice that uh, John Thrasher said hello to Brady. Sweet. All right, man. We're, uh, we're done. Michael Langston might be coming up after this. So um, hang tight if he is. Want to know why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit? It's because they give you fresh ingredients that are already pre-measured out and they result in mouth-watering meals and recipes that you can keep using and they change by the season. So check it out if you have done so already. They got new stuff. I can almost assure you of it. Also, value. HelloFresh, 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store. That number's got to be much bigger if your local grocery store is a Publix. But I digress. 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal. Who says that, Aslan? 
Who? Who? Zagat. The Zagat Dining Survey. You know them. Zagat. They know a thing or two about food. And they've got quick and easy meals, 15 to 20 minute dinners, breakfast on the go, and more easy options. Perfect for a busy lifestyle. And you're like, oh, who said that one, huh? Did Zagat? No, Zagat didn't. You know who did say it, though? Joe Auger. Maybe it's Joe Auge. He's also known as Augie Dog. Tweeted at us a while back saying, got my first box the other night. Can't wait to get into some chicken gyro couscous bowls. We asked him, like, hey, man, let us know how it goes. And he responds back, the chicken gyro couscous bowls gave you authentic Mediterranean taste. It was easy to prepare in just 35 minutes. I mean, Zagat, Joe, me, Corey, who else you got to listen to? Use the promo code WAKEUP12 for 12 free meals and free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com slash WAKEUP12. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Here he is, everybody. I said I'd try to get him. I, I, mission accomplished. It's Michael Lanks and everybody, recruiting analyst for WarChant.com, the ultimate symbol sports source. Michael, how are you, man? What's up, guys? <laughs> Thanks for listening to Wake Up War Chant. Um, yeah, I've been a little busy. Uh, been, uh, I basically live at Florida State. I don't know if you guys know that. I don't live at my house anymore. I basically live at FSU. <laughs> so, no, nah, we're good. Um, busy day. Five official visitors. Big Another camp. Another day at camp. So, uh, yeah. Coach uh, Mike Norvell is making sure that uh, he keeps us active. Seriously, man. So, I guess let's start. Let's start with – so, there was another camp? Yeah. It's an individual camp. This is the individual camps, which is the 13th, the 18th, and the 20th. Um, I won't be at the any of those except for the 20th, which is the last one. Um, and then they also have a, another big man camp and another 7-on-7 seven on, seven on uh, I think, June 16th. So, they're, I mean, the thing is, here's the thing with all that stuff. They... You only get one month to do this stuff. There's a dead, we go into a dead period on July 1st. So they're trying to squeeze in as much evaluations as they can, whatever they can do to get as many kids here. And uh, that's kind of the deal why they're doing all this. What's the individual camp? It's basically just, it's a mini version of um, the mega camp. It's a real mini version, a very mini version. It was probably like 130 kids out there, and there was probably like four or five FSU guys that uh, if you go to uh, the pre recruiting board guys, I just put that up, individual camp observation notes in, on FSU prospects, uh, offered a quarterback out there 2024 that they offered, so I go, I go through all those, so um, yeah, those are about four or five guys that are realistic you know, FSU guys. Okay. All right. Um, I know there's a transfer offensive lineman that we might yes, need to talk about, but, but first, well, let's save it. Let's save it. You know, let's save it. Let's save it. Let's, let's make these people earn it. It's free after all. The podcast. <laughs> um, five official visitors. Um, I want to talk a little about Daughtry Richardson. If you give us some background on him, Michael, but just the the sped up calendar, the way things are with the transfer portal, is that the reason why we're seeing? I don't want to say so many, but it seems like a unorthodox amount of kids making official visits in June. Is it because spots are limited because they know the transfer portal is now a thing? How is that all working out? Or is this not really anything different than it's been in years past? No, it's definitely different. Uh, I was talking actually, to, <laughs> just chatting with Derek McClendon on that you know, today at the camp and just like they never did that when you were there. But I just, uh, I, I think it's twofold. One, it's, it's the thing of the transfer portal and how it's sped up recruitments because, you know, coach is going to take a, a portal guy more than he will a position guy unless it's a five-star or a high four-star or one that they're completely sold on. So these kids are taking their officials in June so they can get their spot and have a spot. So I think that's one thing. And I think the other thing is for some ungodly reason, I think these kids feel like, oh, we might, we might swing back into the pandemic and I might not ever get my visits. So it's kind of like, let me knock it out of the way, get my visits out of the way and uh, get my officials done. And then that way, at least I know, you know, what the schools are. You know, so I think it's kind of both of those answers. Okay. 
All right, let's. Oh man, there's. I want to talk about these these transfer portal prospects, but let's talk about let's talk about the high school kids first. Dr. Richardson, Tallahassee native. Yeah. Down in Miami now, back at Florida State for his official visit. One of five again. Uh, full rundowns of those guys up on the premium recruiting board. But Daughtry, just how how big of a target is he for Florida State, and how much ground or how much do they solidify maybe their spot with him? Do you think after this weekend and speaking to him? Yeah, I, th- I think they're they're good. I think they're in a great sh- a great spot. I mean, he's a Tallahassee native. He went to my alma mater at Godby High School, and then he Ooh. transferred over to Miami Edison. So, um, but he's a Tally kid. He's from Tally. He's a Tally native. That's where he's from. So coming back home for this is almost like a homecoming for him because he has so many people. He has three sisters that are still in Tallahassee that love it here and that live here and. And so I, I think they're in, I think they're in, I think they're in a great position going into the visit, and I still think uh, they're really uh, in a strong position. It's not and you know, it's not because he's a tally kid. It's just the relationship he has with Atkins is so strong. Um, he's a guy that you know Atkins targeted from the start before anybody before these teams got involved. I think there's there's a lot of uh, connection and long standing relationship that he trusts this coach. I don't think he can say that would all the other t- guy teams that are involved. So I think, I think they solidified their spot. I would say with him, he, he said, he, he said all the nice things and, you know, he said all the, I guess, uh, uh, what's the word poetic or things are just normal things. Right. Right. But, he checked all the boxes off of what he liked to right, you know, say. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, I think he was just, you know, he, one, he doesn't elaborate a lot on interviews anyway, but he, you could tell. I mean, just the people I talked to over the weekend, they feel pretty good about that one. So I think FSU's in a good spot there. All right, uh, two transfers potential, whether or not potential. I mean, they're they're out there. Whether or not they come to Florida State is, is another question. <laughs> um, and everybody wants to talk about offensive linemen, but let's wait. Let's wait. Well, we got we got one more roadblock I can put in front of everybody. Uh, Marcus Cushney from Alabama A yes. and M, Michael, yes. um, pretty potent pass rusher. One of the more dominant forces in the SWAC uh, played this past season with the the uh, amended spring season because of COVID. Florida native, uh, yep. another guy out there. Uh, what do you, what kind of vibe do you get from him? Uh, maybe anything you've heard from the staff or people close to the program about how they they value him and do they have room for him and the next guy that we're going to talk about? Do you think? <laughs> Well, first of all, I don't keep track of what they have room for because it sounds like they it's just have crazy. unlimited room. Every time we yeah. turn around, there's an extra scholarship. But right. um, I think they're going to find a way. I think they want an offensive lineman and a defensive end uh, or, or best available. Uh, I think Marcus is, is a guy they've, they've liked a lot. He visited FSU over the weekend. Uh, I, I saw him there Friday, and I, I called Ira, and I'm like, this dude looks like Marcus Christian. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that's him, but I kind of blew it off. Then I saw him again uh, the next day, and then he worked out on that Saturday. And uh, from what I told, I was told he had a really good workout. They, they liked everything they saw, and then obviously Sunday uh, they offered him. Um, so, yeah, he was he was on campus. Uh, I, I've been talking, chatting with Marcus, and I, I get the impression that it's pretty, it's pretty likely it's going to be FSU that he – and he's going to decide next week sometime. That's, and he told me uh, that he's also enrolling like in late July. So uh, that's that's kind of what he – kind of the message he, he passed along to me. But um, the indication I got is that it looked pretty good. And I don't know the FSU side of it if, uh, you know, how hard they're pushing. But I would imagine if they're having him on campus for a visit and they're working him out, you know, and they offered him the next day. I would say they won, hmm. but uh, you know that's kind of my take on the subject. But yeah, I think they could get some good news on 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 Marcus. Uh, you know, sometime next week, barring some unforeseen uh, thing happening. He's from uh, Palm Beach Central, which is the same school as the King Dent and Brian Robinson, by the way, and his brother. Um, uh, who are, I came with Dent's brother, uh, Aldarius uh, Dent. Yeah. Uh, I think they're all from the same school. Or, I think yep. Aldarius yep. might have played at Pahokee. But yeah, you're right. Anyway, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, but uh, definitely Akeem Dent and Brian Robinson from the same school. So he's from that area. Liked FSU a lot growing up. Uh, I think this offer means a lot to him. 
So I think everything looks pretty good there. His defensive grades on pro football focus, again, Alabama AM. and uh, He graded out 87, pass rush against South Carolina State, 72 versus Jackson State, 78.9 against Alabama State, and then 83.8 in the championship game. Uh, and he had six sacks in, in four games, 14 hurries. He graded out 90.4 pass rush. Now you can say, hey, it's FCS. <laughs> Michael, I guess you know, you're more of the recruiting guy, obviously, but you have opinions on everything when it comes to football. Have we been so focused on Jermaine Johnson, what he can bring, that we've, we fall into this false sense of we're good. We're good at pass rusher now. We can, you know, we, Keir Thomas will fill in the gaps. But, man, um, this entices me. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very intrigued about the possibility of, a, of another dynamic pass rusher. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you ever can – FSU can ever look at a situation and say, oh, we're good. Like, I mean – Right. Especially on defense, like you shouldn't be saying like, "Oh, we're good." No, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're definitely not good. If you got a chance, to add, I mean, especially the way they recruit pass rushers. I mean, look how uh, how active they've been just in the high school market, getting twenty twenty three defensive ends to commit. I mean, they it's obviously a, a position that they know they want improvement. So you got a chance to get somebody, and, and people mention like Alabama A and M. Well, Kane Madden's from Marshall. I mean, so we, we're just going to start picking and choosing teams that just because they play for a lesser team or a lesser program because they play FCS teams. I mean, if the guy can play, the guy can play. I mean, I, I mean, and that's why you work. That's why I told somebody today. It's like that's why you work them out. They worked them out. He checked all everything they were looking for, and then they offered them the next day. So it's like. They've done their due diligence on this, and and it sounds like the guy can get after the pass rusher and. I don't care if the guy's from Prairie View, Connecticut. I mean, if, if the guy could get after the pass rusher, I would think Seminole fans would want that. Mm. 47 tackles, 20 and a half for loss, 14 sacks in his last 16 games. He's actually at 245 right now. He's 6'2", 245, uh, the SID program. Yep. Not all that strong. Uh, no. <laughs> outside, I think Huntsville. I don't know. Alabama State, I think, is outside of Montgomery. I think A&M is outside of Huntsville. But uh, nonetheless, I digress. Okay, uh, one last shot at this, Michael. I mean, right? I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how many more. Guys are going to keep going in the portal. But in terms of All-Americans like Kane Madden or the next hour, Stacey Wilkins, four-star, yes. yes. uh, sat out last season due to COVID, played 50 snaps in 19. But a tackle, man, everybody wanted to tackle. Uh, how, how legitimate of a target do you think he is for Florida State, and um, what sort of interest do you think uh, both sides might have in this one? I think it's a legit interest uh, from the FSU side. I have to check on the the um, you know Stacy Wilkes side, but I think from the FSU side, they want this kid bad. Okay, that's that's the impression I got. Like, I'll just say he was the buzz around FSU today, and I'll just leave it at that. Like, so I definitely feel confident that he's a guy that they're active with. Um, and certainly, I think he's an offensive tackle, it seems, or That's he's played true. both tackle and guard, but most mostly tackle. I think he's more of a tackle than a guard. But he's a guy that certainly uh, attracts them, they like. And uh, eventually, all these other teams in their competition, they got to run out of players. <laughs> I mean, eventually, give FSU a chance, dude. It's like, man, they just want one more, dude. I mean, it's like, just just let them be. But we'll see how it works out. But I definitely feel there's a strong amount of interest uh, with FSU. I know FSU players are already working on this kid. So I know usually when you see FSU players on a kid, that's usually a telltale sign that, hey, FSU wants this guy because I mean, these are players on the team, so I'm sure they talk to the coaches before they do all that stuff. But I got the impression that the the players are definitely active with Stacy. So yeah, this is a guy that definitely uh, keep an eye on. That's why I told Ira earlier today that he might want to put something up on that. So I think he's a name to watch. Not uh, hopefully. Stacy Wilkes to tally doesn't get trending and stuff and, and people fall into that stuff and the, we'll just see what happens but I think they're going to keep doing this Aslan though until I mean they're adamant that they want another offensive lineman it's like they want one and I mean technically they have until August probably mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, I think they're going to keep trying this until until they get it and 
as we've seen with this staff, they're they're extremely relentless, and uh, you know I think I think they're going to keep doing it until they they get it done. And I, I think their plan is uh, you know to get um, you know two guys. Oh, by the way, I saw Dylan Gibbons. That kid looks really good. Okay, like to, I saw him today. He was out there helping uh, somewhat with the um, you know the individual camp today. So definitely already a guy that's showing some leadership qualities to get out there. And even if you're not doing anything, just to be around your team like that. So Absolutely. Uh, Stacey Wilkins was the 78th uh, overall prospect in the entire nation back in 2019. Hmm. Four-star from Camden, Arkansas, currently listed at 6'6", 316. Do get to the point now, though. I mean, you mentioned we got till August, but I do wonder just what the, the situations that will arise to make yeah. kids want to leave their current schools. But, hey, it's – so Oklahoma, maybe there's, you know, maybe he doesn't like Norman, you know, maybe, I don't want to say, you know, who knows, but, uh, I, you know, a little bit of skepticism some people have there, but we'll trust the coach's judgment on these things. Your phone's ringing. You're a busy man, Michael. That's a good thing <laughs> no, for us to wrap this up. It's probably up. just my brother, and uh, I told him not to call me, but apparently hey, he doesn't listen. It's fine. We've done 15 minutes of it, man. This is plenty of your time, man. We appreciate <laughs> it, Michael. Thank you. you Get it. some sleep. Everybody, thanks for listening to Wake Up War Chant. He's Michael for Corey. I'm Aslan. Have a great one, everybody. Come explore our world of coffee. DeLuna Coffee features over two dozen different blends. DeLuna's unique roasts can be delivered ground finely for drip coffee makers, coarse for the craft crowd, untouched as a whole bean, or even in convenient K-cups. Founded in 2014 by the Lemix family, Ed and Brett are FSU alums and boosters who are extending a special offer to all listeners. Use the promo code WARCHANT15 for a 15% discount. Visit DeLunaCoffee.com and check out their Facebook and Instagram.